Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Prosser United Methodist Church. Um, Daryl, I think my sound is a little bit on the loud side today. No, it's ringing over the, the microphone, over the, over the um, speaker here. Yeah, I, um, I think there was somebody around this week in the sanctuary space because we had an uh, issue with the candles being different size, lights being different sizes, wicks, and this has been messed with. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. I wanted to welcome you to our worship service uh, and uh, for this Sunday, March 27th, 2022, the uh, fourth Sunday of Lent. I got that right this week. I've been saying Advent for the last couple of weeks, and that's the wrong season of the year. There are a few uh, uh, announcements in the bulletin I want to raise up uh, for you. One is that you've got an envelope in your bulletin for one great hour of sharing or UMCOR Sunday as it's called now. If you would like to give to uh, the UMCOR, this is the only offering that goes to UMCOR that goes directly to the administrative costs of running UMCOR. All other donations to UMCOR go 100% to whatever cause it is that um, that is being addressed. So this provides money for the opportunity for, for people to do the administrative work of, of keeping UMCOR running. So if you would like to contribute to that, um, please use that envelope. We um, want to announce, uh, note that in the schedule for this coming week, uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday is men's group. Uh, they'll be meeting at 8 a.m. Uh, in the friendship room to do some work around the church and also to do a bit of uh, donut eating and coffee drinking. Um, next Sunday, following church, we will be having coffee hour again. So we will, we will be going with that and uh, uh, if you would like to sign up to do a coffee hour, we'll get a sign up sheet uh, going outside uh, in the, uh, in the uh, Narthex space there, the entry space. We will, even though next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, we will not be doing a potluck yet, but we may be get to do, might get to do one of those in May. Uh, if uh, numbers keep going well. We have some birthday people uh, on our list for this week, and one of them is with us today, and that's George Harold. Uh, and George has got a, a week, uh, a birthday coming up this week. Uh, let's join in singing George, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Our liturgist this morning is Rita Eady. And she will be leading us in the call to worship and opening prayer that are printed in the bulletin. And she will be reading our scriptures this morning as well. Good morning. It's a beautiful Sunday. Call to worship. Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. <coughs> I was a stranger. You welcomed me. Welcome me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick. You took care of me. I was in prison. You visited me. Let us walk humbly with our God. May we see Christ in one another. That we may be healers and be saviors in Christ's name. Opening prayer in unison. Gracious God, source of wisdom and insight, we know you see us as we are, and we know how often you try to pretend we are something we are not. We can put other people down so that we look better. We stretch the truth of our accomplishments and push off to others our failures. We pretend to listen to constantly seeking our own advantage. Loving and forgiving God, help us not. Give us the courage to put our 
scripture reading Joshua chapter 5 verses 9 to 12 Lord said to Joshua Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt and so that place is called Gilgal to this day while the Israelites were camped in Gilgal they kept the passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho on the day after passover that very day they ate the produce of the land unleavened cakes and parched grain the manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land and the israelites no longer had manna they ate the crops of the land of canaan that year the gospel reading luke chapter 15 verses 1 to 3 now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him and the pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them so he told them this parable luke 15 verses chapter 11 to 32 jesus said there was a man who had two sons the younger of them said to his father father give me the share of the property that will belong to me so he divided his property between them <clears throat> a few days later the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country and there he squandered his property and dissolute living when he had spent everything a severe famine took place throughout the country and he began to be in need so he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs he would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything but when he came to himself he said how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare but here i am dying of hunger i will get up and go to my father and i will say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you i'm no longer worthy to be called your son treat me like one of your hired hands so he said of and went to his father but while he was still afar his father saw him and was filled with compassion he ran and put his arms around him and kissed him then the son said to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you i am no longer worthy to be called your son but the father said to his slaves quickly bring out a robe the best one and put it on him put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and he is alive again he was lost and he is found and they began to celebrate now his oldest elder son was in the field and when he came and approached the house 
He heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked, what was going on? He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he came, became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you're always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the word of the Lord. Will you join me for a moment of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations upon each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is uh, perhaps a familiar story for many of us, the story of the prodigal son. We have the two sons and the father, and we kind of know that story about uh, what happens in there. And a lot of times what we hear and what we see when we read this story is that we see it as a story of forgiveness. Uh, it is the forgiveness of the father for the actions and the attitude uh, that the son, younger son displayed early in the story and welcoming the younger son back home and, uh, and uh, the dinner that he prepares for that son. And it certainly is about that. And uh, it's certainly a direct response to the Pharisees and scribes who say, how can you eat and drink with these sinners uh, that you have? Jesus is saying to the scribes in this story, God welcomes all sinners back to eat and drink and fellowship together. Uh, so there's, there is that uh, aspect of it too. But we're in Lent. And Lent is a, a time when we uh, uh, examine more closely uh, some of the, the, the feelings and some of the, the motivations that go on within us. And I think we should do that with this story as well. So what, what is it that the father had to forgive the son for? What was the sin, actually, that both of the sons committed? or part, put, partook in. And I would wonder if it isn't pride. Um, pride uh, as, uh, for the younger son, but also pride for the older son, too. C.S. Lewis, in his book, uh, Mere Christianity, defines pride, or sees pride, as the worst of all sins. The worst of all sins. Now, that kind of sounds funny because we're kind of, we're taught that all sins are bad. Uh, there isn't one that's worse than the others. But he's very adamant about the fact that pride is actually worse than other sins because all other sins primarily have to do with just ourselves. If we're greedy, we want more money. But that's just on our own. Pride, Lewis says, is competitive. And that's what makes it different. That's why it's worse than other sins. Because pride looks around and says, I want more money than that person. I'm not going to be satisfied unless I have more money than that group of people. I want more money than anyone else in the whole world. 
That's a different kind of greed. That's greed and with pride added into it. Now I want to be clear that, uh, that Lewis doesn't go into this, but there are, I believe, um, good aspects to pride and competition. It's good to be proud of the work that you do. It's okay to be competitive with other people, provided you don't go over the boundary where your self-worth and the other person's self-worth is dependent on how that competition turns out. For instance, I played volleyball in college on our church volleyball team. My brothers and, and I did. And um, we played, I played with them for about five years. We had a really good, pretty good team. We practiced every week uh, in the basement of the church, which was our fellowship hall underneath the sanctuary, just like here. Uh, it had a little bit higher ceiling uh, than, uh, than downstairs here. Otherwise, we would have been hitting the ball off the ceiling a whole lot more than we did. Um, but actually, hitting the ceiling made us a little bit uh, uh, more uh, accurate in the way we played ball. We, we had to develop the, the ability to skill to uh, not hit the ceiling as hard, get the ball where we wanted it to be. Anyway, we, we did really pretty good most of the time. Unless we were playing the RLDS teams, there were two RLDS teams, uh, our reformed Latter-day Saints, and um, in the league. And they were the really good teams. And they were always the competition we looked forward to each year because it was a test of how good we were to, uh, as to how well we did against them. And we beat them sometimes, and we, and we lost to them probably more times than we beat them. Um, but in terms of pride and competition, what was good about it was it was good competition against a good team. And what we would look for, now at first I had to admit, I, I evolved over my years uh, in playing volleyball. Um, at first it would get me down when we lost to the RLDS team, just because we lost. But as it went on, I realized as long as I did my best, as long as we did our best as a team, whether we won or lost really didn't matter. What mattered was playing our best. That's good competition. And that's good pride when you look, can look back at a game like that or something that you've done, and say, I did my best with that. And it turned out as well as I could do. I will say, there was one year when we did go undefeated. That was a good year. <laughs> but that was because we did really play our best the whole year long. So there's, there's a good aspect to pride and to competition. It can, be, it can be healthy, not only healthy, but necessary for us. But we want to, when we want to talk about the sin of pride, like Lewis is talking about, then we are looking at how are we competing with other people in ways that are destructive to ourselves and to them. Look at the, the younger, uh, younger son in this story. It's because of his pride, really, that he asks for his inheritance. You've probably heard what in, in the culture of that time, and, and even in our culture today, to go ahead and ask for your inheritance ahead of time is basically saying to your, your parent, I wish you were dead so I could have all your stuff, or at least my portion of your stuff. That's not a healthy attitude to have. That's saying, I'm better than you are. I should have that. And he's essentially saying he's better than his brother because he didn't ask for it for his brother to get his inheritance, you know, for his brother to receive his inheritance. He's just asking for his own. and He wants to go out and do what he wants to do. He's, he doesn't have to be confined to the traditions and the culture of his time. He's better than that. 
better than those, all the rest of these people. That's the competitive part of it that Lewis is talking about. And then he goes off and he wastes it all. And he ends up feeding pigs and basically eating the slops that the pigs have in order to survive. And he realizes he was better off at home. Even if he were home taking care of the pigs of his father, he would be better off because they fed their workers real food. And so he learns humility, which is the opposite side of pride. And he goes home, set to just ask for the job feeding the pigs for his dad, being a worker there, not anything more than that. But instead, he gets this great big party, this welcome back, this forgiveness, this love, this grace. Because he set his pride aside, turned away from that, and has sought forgiveness for that, and he receives it. The older brother also has a problem with pride in this story. He's mad at his brother for having done what he did. He doesn't think his brother deserves to be celebrated. He's comparing himself and what he thinks is right and saying it's better than what his father thinks is right. And his father comes and talks to him and invites him to join in. But I love the fact that we don't know at the end of this story what happens. We don't know if the older son sets aside his sin of pride and joins in with the party. We don't know how things turn out at the end. We don't know if the son, the younger son, maintains his humility or if after a while of eating well again and being comfortable again, if that old pride comes back. Because that's how it is in life, isn't it? When we're struggling with something within ourselves, a characteristic we have, it doesn't just go away once and it's gone forever. It comes back or wants to or tries to, and we have to be on guard against it. How do we compete in good ways, and how do we compete in not so good ways? You know, sports is easy to talk about in terms of competition, and there are a lot of good competitors in sports. But there are some who feel that they need or deserve an edge, a foot up. We've had problems with steroids in baseball and football. We've had problems with the same thing in the Olympics even. People have to get tested now in those sports to make sure they're not cheating because they feel like they deserve to win. They, need, they deserve that edge better than other people do. There are ways in our everyday lives too, not just in sports. What are the reasons behind something that we do? Are we doing it because we want to be better than other people? Have the best car in the neighborhood? Have the best house in the neighborhood? Or are we doing it because we feel this is the right thing for us? We're doing our best in our lives. For ourselves, for our family, for our community. Because all those are part of it. When we think only of ourselves, when we think only of our own individual rights, and not about the community, 
we may be edging off into that sin of pride. So it's something that we need to watch for in our lives as well. The other thing, final thing on this, is that this story is also a dig at the Pharisees and the scribes by Jesus because it's their pride, Pharisees and the scribes, that lead them to say that these people aren't worthy to eat dinner or to drink with. You would never catch us doing that. Jesus says to them, the Father forgives. The Father looks at our hearts and takes us in when we are ready to give up our sin of pride. It's not the people eating and drinking here that have pride in this situation. It's the scribes and the Pharisees that do. Let's stand and join in the Statement of Faith, number 881 in the Red Hymnal, entitled The Apostles' Creed. This is the traditional version of that. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join together in prayer. Eternal God, we come before you as your people in prayer and we share with you the joys and the concerns that are upon our hearts in this moment of silence.
God of grace, we give you thanks for the many blessings that you give to us. For the blessings of life, of rain and of sunshine, of seasons in the year, of flowers and blossoms, fresh spring air. of family and friends, neighbors, co-workers. Lord, we pray for the world, for the many ways in which it needs your love, your grace. for the many ways it needs our best efforts. Lord, we pray for nations at war, for communities of people who are in turmoil because of that war, for those who have died, those who have lost loved ones, those who have been hurt, and scarred physically and emotionally. For those who are hungry, those who are displaced. We pray for those who are struggling to recover from natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, flooding, fire, Lord, inspire us, help us to reach out to those in need. Help us to welcome those who need you into our hearts. Lord, we pray for your church. Help it to be the body of Christ. Help it to welcome those who are struggling with pride. With sin. Help us to forgive ourselves. Help us to forgive others. Help us to accept your forgiveness. Lord, help us to be watchful, mindful, as we go through life. We may do our best to share your love, your grace, your comfort, throughout our world. We pray this in the name of the Christ who went to the cross and taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before I have us uh, do the benediction, 
Uh, we had another birthday person uh, come in since the beginning of the service, and let's uh, sing happy birthday to Brenda as well back there. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Now will you rise for the benediction? Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve our God in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.